open meeting laws and regulations and such. Just let everybody know that they're being recorded tonight as we uh, start this meeting. And I will call the meeting to order at uh, 6.03 p.m. on August 24, 2023, for the Town and Deerfield Conservation Commission uh, routine monthly meeting. Um, so let me go through the um, some of the background here. Um, so we cover everything. Normally, the uh, we're having this meeting uh, remote on Zoom. That have been um, the information have been um, presented on the Town of Deerfield uh, website. And certain meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access. access and where required, public participation provided in accordance with House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31 of 2025. Um, so with that, I think we can um, start on to the meeting. Um, the meeting guidelines, um, as always, for the town of Deerfield is please speak one at a time, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, being respectful, uh, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. And I would ask um, that if anybody has anything they would like to discuss to um, request to speak to myself as the chair, and then um, unless presenting, um, please keep your comments to a two to three minute time frame. Um, so at that point, then we'll identify the members present tonight and I'll just do a general roll call. Um, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin here. Uh, ben Byrne. I don't see Ben. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby here. Um, great. Um, Anne Mary, I don't see Anne Mary. Uh, Pete Law, so we have three out of the five commissioners here tonight. And so we oh. should be able to go ahead and proceed. Uh, ben is about to hop on. Okay. I'll give him a second. Okay. And I texted Ann Mary. We'll see if she gets it. Yeah. Okay. Well, the first item is uh, reviewing the minutes from uh, July 27th. So we'll give them a couple minutes, uh, Ben and Ann Mary, to see if they show up. But then we can go through that. And then we do have three items of old business one for from SWCA request for certificate of compliance relative to DEP file number 1420215. Uh, we have also the same request uh, from Deerfield Academy uh, for D DEP file numbers 1420209, 1420212, and 1420177. And then we have a number of emergency certificates um, that we completed, that I completed last month that we will need to um, look at the ratification of, and I can give you some updates on what's happening there. And then um, if there's any new business, general discussion, we have some mail and um, we can go from there. Uh -huh, here comes someone. See Ben. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. I'm here. Hey, Ben. How you doing? Running like a madman. We're we're making it work. Yeah. All right. Glad you can make it. And I I have to apologize. I think I'm not sure if you got the uh, the meeting packet that um, Amy sent out the other day because I forgot to um, send it on to you. I know you have some email issues with the town. 
it uh, it definitely came through. Uh, oh. I'm still driving, so peeking at it's going to be a little problematic. But uh, yeah, I didn't. yeah, please, yeah, please don't. Uh, we'll we'll talk through it here. Okay. Well, we're we're set to go then. So we have four out of five of the commissioners present. So um, the first order of business tonight is review of the minutes from July 27th, 2023. And I would just ask to make sure everybody received it. Uh, if you have a chance to review it, if there's any other comments to the minutes that were uh, presented, um, that's part of the meeting package. And I can show those if anybody needs them. But uh, if there's no other comments, then I would just take a uh, a motion to accept as written. But first, is any comments or no? So I don't see anything from the commissioners. So um, if I get a motion to accept the me uh, the minutes as written from seven twenty seven twenty twenty three. I'd like uh, Kate Devlin. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes as written for. 72723. All right. Uh, do we have a second? Ben Byrne, I'll second. All right, Ben. Okay, we got a motion on the table. Any further discussion on that? If not, we'll do a quick roll call vote on acceptance uh, on the motion on the table, accepting the minutes. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. John Libby. John Libby, aye. Uh, Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So the motion passes uh, four to zero here. So minutes are accepted. Thank you very much. Um, so now we'll get into the um, some of the items of the old business that we're trying to wrap up today. And I can uh, share my screen at any time. I have the uh, meeting package over here on the other screen like my heads keep bobbing around um but the first item is um swca request for certificate of comp compliance for dep file number uh, 142-0215 and i see we have kristen on the line tonight who's representing uh the applicant uh she's with swca so kristen do you want to give us any updates or do we want to how would you like to proceed Sure. So I believe we opened this um, the last time you 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 met. Um, we have done a site walk. So this project is DEP file number one four two zero two one five, which is associated with the uh, Cumberland Farm Store in Deerfield. Um, there is a partial certificate of compliance already granted and associated with the store, but this particular DEP file number is associated with the. Um, stream crossing and wetland restoration plan. Uh, SWCA was hired by the applicant to um, complete both uh, construction oversight and reporting to the commission during the work in the resource areas and to report on the post-construction restoration success criteria. And I believe we wrapped that up a couple of years ago, but it was during COVID and it was kind of a crazy time. So things are a little bit um, not fresh on our minds, but I have pretty good files and I, I'm, I'm happy to share anything that needs to be shared with the commission. If I can help with that. Okay. And let me just share my screen on the uh, materials that we have now. Um, so you should be seeing a schematic of the, uh, restoration, uh, area. Mm -hmm. And any comments there, Kristen, on that or from the, um, oops, sorry, going too fast here, from the commissioners of anything that needs to be done. And as Kristen mentioned, this is only for 0215, which was the, the work done on the westerly side of the project. Um, I'll um, comment a little bit on the partially cl closed one on 0208 in just a bit, but this would be on the covert side of the area. Um, this is the view of what the plan was. Um, Sean, Libby, and I did a site visit with Kristen, I think on, I had the notes here someplace, but it was in back in July. July and, 21st, uh, it was the day of the storm. Yeah, yeah I got yeah. five and 10. <laughs> Just during that 10 minute commute home, I got trapped. 
Oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, we just missed the rain. That was good. So we do. Um, and Sean, please jump in here. I'll just give a, a little bit of a my thoughts on that. It's like when we met. Um, you know, most of the, everything was, um, you know, pretty much acceptable to the orders of conditions. Um, that we've outlined, and I'm just looking up the uh, here so I can share my screen what the um, special orders were um, at that time and special conditions, and here they are. Um, so it looked like everything was in place. The construction material was removed. Um, everything is in place as far as the plan. There was definitely over a 75% coverage of the uh, plantings in the area, uh, the buffer zone, restoration, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I, I'll see if Sean has any comments on that. Did you notice anything different, Sean? And and then if not, then um, there is one thing that we want to discuss tonight um, that we did see out there. But Sean, anything relative to the plan that you noted when you're out in the site? No, and uh, I uh, I thought everything looked great. Uh, I additionally would mention um, I would support the applicant's request to um, be able to treat on site the invasive plants that were mentioned uh, in several of the documents and that we saw on site that day um, yeah. as an ongoing maintenance um, yeah. as part of our uh, signing off of all compliance. And any comments from uh, Ben or Kate on the project from the documents you, re you have reviewed? I can see no, Kate shaking no, her head now. No, okay. Okay. I don't see, see anything from Ben. I'll say, so when we were on site, um, we did uh, notice that there were several uh, invasive species that were identified in that area, uh, purple loosestrife and knotweed. And as part of the special conditions, you can see here, number nine is a long-term operating and maintenance of the culvert should be a non-expiring condition. And as part of that, I would like to discuss, and, and Kristen has, you know, we've discussed with her that there should be an ongoing invasive species plan uh, relative to number nine here um, based on, you know, uh, Kristen did say, which is part of the uh, document here, which I believe I have it in a minute, uh, the number of invasive species that would be in the area. We've identified a couple of them, um, but I would like to discuss whether we would include this as a ongoing condition of the approval here um, based on special condition number nine. Um, so an invasive species plan that would be developed, um, submitted to us. They would actually, you know, obviously require a licensed applicator, licensed by the state to do so. And per, and I would say we just use um, this listing um, that was sent to us uh, by SWCA um, for that plan. And we would incorporate that list and the conditions for the ongoing conditions on our Form 8B, which would be the Certificate of Compliance, and I would then say we look at um, checking off, this is on Form 8B under Part B Certification, the um, ongoing conditions box, uh, which said the following conditions of the order shall continue, and that's to maintain the covert, and we would put down the um, number nine as a condition and then note it as a invasive species uh, plan to be, um, you know, maintained by a Massachusetts license applicator. Does that make sense to you, Kristen, first? Yes, it does. I just, I would just for, you know, your discussion up to you, would you want to have the applicant notify the commission X number of days prior to, to, you know, I don't know if you want to. I don't know if you want to require approval or notice, and then some sort of summary after treatment. Obviously, it's going to be implemented by a licensed applicator, but um, just you know, 
what does the commission want in terms of notification prior and um, summary after? And is there a time frame for that? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thanks for bringing that up. But uh, we would probably want a, a you know a thirty day notice prior, okay. um, and then a um, summation within whatever um, you feel as a consultant would be, and whether it's a thirty day or a a ninety day period, you know something in that period of a um, a follow up. Because I think if I looked at um, uh, the not weeds um, can do it any time during the summer, and the loose strife is um, during growing season. Um, you know, so you'd have to do it in that area. We would, we would, you know, request that you know we follow this um, the treatment schedule, um, but with a thirty day notice up front in the. Um, if you think a 90 day notice afterwards for summation, or if you can get it done in a 30 or 60 day, um, I think we can work with that. That sounds fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So it'd be a, a 30 day prior and a 90 day um, summary after application. And um, then I would suggest, you know, looking at, um, Form 8B um, as an ongoing conditions, because as I noted in number nine, this is an ongoing condition that goes on forever. Um, and that um, we can put the the details in there of that we would uh, include the, the list of the, the species to be done, the treatment and treatment schedules, and then requirement for a 30 day prior notice, and then a uh, subsequent 90 day um, summary uh, following application. Okay, so for the applicant, that would make sense. That sounds great. Okay, um, commissioners, any additional thoughts of my thoughts on this? Are we locked into this list or can it be added to if like another invasive species pops up? <laughs> That's a great question. Do you want to say, um, you know, could be amended at any time or something like that? Because some of these species aren't present on site currently. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, but there may be, and there's, you know, poison ivy, which is a nuisance plant, but not an invasive plant. So yeah. Could we just make yeah. this a non-inclusive list? Yeah, know? maybe just phrase it that way. Okay. Okay, we can work on that language before we put the form together um, uh, to put it out, but I think um, that's a really good ideas, everybody. Any other thoughts? No, I thought the closeout and everything looked great at Cumberland Farms, and I love moving forward on treating invasives. So, yeah. So we need to concentrate uh, right now on just the one four two zero two one five, which is this one in front of us. So, um, would probably take uh, if people are ready, um, look at a motion to um, accept uh, and complete uh, Form Eight B with um, Markov on B on the ongoing conditions for invasive species um, remediation and monitoring. And then when we put the form together, we will put in all the uh, additional wording and, and include the, um, the list and that is on a comprehensive list and the scheduling and the, and the 30 day, 90 day kind of thing but that can all be done on the form but i think right now we can go ahead we would i would if i have a motion out there that we can look at um to accept the certificate of compliance with ongoing conditions as we discussed uh, this evening john libby uh i'll make a motion uh to accept the certificate of compliance form 8b uh, with ongoing certification uh, regarding order condition number nine 
to be amended uh, into um, the motion. Um, Does that work for everybody or is uh yeah I think I got I got it okay because be ongoing conditions under um form eight b relative back to the standing um condition number special condition number nine on the initial uh submittal so if everybody's good with the motion. Any other discussion? Okay, Devlin, I'll second the motion if we want to. Okay. <laughs> so motion on the table, right? I'm supposed to do that first, and then we can have more discussion. You're yeah. right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm such a parliamentarian myself. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so any other further discussion from the commissioners? Okay. I don't hear any. don't see anything. Looking at the screen. Um, so the motion is on the table to accept the uh, cert certificate of compliance for 0215 uh, with the ongoing conditions as we discuss this evening. This evening, and that will be um, you know put in uh, much more detail when um, when fill out the certificate. Okay, so we'll take a uh, roll call then to ex uh, accept that motion. Um, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So a motion passes. And Kristen, thank you for a lot of the information that you've sent us along the way and to meet us on site a few times now. And for the town, I apologize. It took us half a decade to get this done, but we're getting there. Um, okay. I appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. All right. We'll get the form put together and, and follow through. And then um, um, I think we're I think we're good. Now, while you're on relative to 0208, which is still out sitting out there as a DEP file, we did have a partial um, closure on that of compliance. Um, there are some issues that I think the commission has with the um, the state of the uh, detention area uh, basin, and we just have to do this separately. We can't combine it with with this request versus that request. So there will be a reach out. And Kristen, do you are does SWCA um, have responsibility consulting responsibility for that section, or would that be something different? Do you know? Um, you know, we can talk about that a little bit more offline, but there, there yep. this is such an old NOI. There was an engineer who have probably walked away at this point, um, and Cumberland Farms is the applicant. I believe there's an ongoing condition or multiple ongoing conditions in perpetuity, no matter what, that the yes. commission is... And I think you've probably spoken with Mark Stinson from DEP about this, that the commission is able to receive upon request all maintenance reports. Yep. Um, and if there's, you know, sediment accumulation in that, I don't remember if it's a detention or a retention or whatever basin, but, um, yeah. you know, if it's holding water longer than it should be and it's not functioning as intended, um, that's not the BMP that was permitted, then there can still be some dialogue in perpetuity. Yeah. That was my understanding. Yes, um, that's correct. And I just need to open that back up after talking with Mark. And I didn't know if you were going to be my contact with that or I'll reach out to, if not, Cumberland Farms to to let them know that we want to take a look at that order of conditions can, again. Yeah, you can copy me as well because I'm happy okay. to help. Like I said, I, I you know, I have all the records. I, I'm not yeah. sure if Dominic does and I'm, I'm happy to help. So, yeah, greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right, so that's the first one of old business agenda. The second one is the Deerfield Academy request for a certificate of compliance. Um, there's three of them. There's DEP file numbers 142029, 142.0212, and 142.0177. 
Um, the consultant on record uh, here is Ty and Vaughn. And um, I don't know if we, I think I saw some folks from Ty and Vaughn. Yeah, uh, Chuck Croce with Ty and Vaughn. Hi, Chuck, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. And, and Andrew White with Ty and Vaughn. Hi, Andrew. Um, so Kate and I did a site visit out there on July 18th, August 18th, sorry, I'm in the wrong month, a couple of weeks ago, um, on the 18th to review these three areas. Um, and let's start, if you don't mind, I'll just scroll down here. Um, the first one is uh, 0209 for the Deer Field Academy Fieldhouse and Hockey Rink Project. And um, why don't we start there? And either Andrew or uh, Chuck, if you want to kind of give us a a quick background here, and then we can go through general discussion. Yeah, I can give a quick background. Um, <clears throat> back in 2017, Deerfield Academy started construction of a new ice rink and uh, field house complex. There was, a, as part of that work, there was some proposed work that occurred in both um, wetland buffer and also bordering land subject to flooding, mostly on the south side of the project, which included, you know, generally the construction of a, a fire lane, um, a Zamboni ramp area, a sidewalk up to the back of the facility, and then also part of the building. And then in um, 2000, also around 2017, 18, Deerfield Academy also constructed a new health center and as part of that work, there was um, proposed work in wetland buffer area, which included uh, part of the new health center, some pavement area and parking area, and also um, reconstruction uh, construction of a planted slope. And then the third application uh, occurred back in 2010. It's an order of resource delineation. And um, from what I understand, it was a request for a determination um, by the from the commission on a delineation of a resource area. There was no work actually done. It was just to request a determination. So there's really nothing um, to share as far as what was done there. It was just just a request. Okay. Um, those are, and those are the three items, and I'll be more than happy to, you know, share my screen and point out, you know, any of the specifics of that work. Yeah, I want to take a look at a couple of things. Um, but let's start with the, the field house, uh, 0209, the hockey rink area. Um, uh, Kate and I were out there. Um, as we reviewed it, to me, it all seemed to match up to the conditions of the um, required conditions here. Um, Kate, did you have any other thoughts about what was out there? No, it, it seemed to me to, it looked, it looked good. It looked like things were filling in and working as they should. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if we want to make a motion on each of these three. It's one agenda item, so we can probably make an emotion on all three of them, but I would have a comment on, on one of the two um, going forward. So I'm not sure commissioners how you'd want to address if you want to do a motion on each one because on this one I would suggest on the certificate of compliance that we would just um, write off that there was a complete certification. Any thoughts on how you want to proceed if you want to go through them one at a time or we can put a motion together at the end for all three of them since it is one agenda item. I don't, I don't have any. a preference. Yeah. I think it could be handled as one. Okay. Um, complete certification versus do you really want the details in the motion that say that, you know, 0177, no work done, you know, or can we just. Yeah. We'll, get the, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a point. second because yeah. um, um, one of these will have a, a little bit more of a comment, actually, the, the second one. So I think on. What we would do then, Sean, is say we would look at 142-0209 um, as um, a complete certification. And then as we look at 
Uh, and I'm going to scroll down a bit. Sorry to make your eyes go cranny. So 0212 was the health center. And Kate and I reviewed that area. And um, one of the things that we talked about while we were out there was this side hill. Um, you can see the plantings here. And there was a definite... Um, and it had rained. <laughs> That's all it does this year. But there was a definite early morning, when, and there was some definite, you know, streaks of water coming off. And some of the mulching here had come into the street that was just below it. Um, so this is on the western side of the slope. Here's the building here. This is on the west side. Um, a lot of this vegetation has grown in to be much higher right now but my suggestion was or my thought was was that we may want to uh, include more vegetation in that area to help um, lock in some of that that water flow from coming down through and moving there is a, um, a wetlands area across the street from it uh, and that was uh, what Chuck was talking about the road is paved such that it would take quite a lot of water to get into there but there could be a possibility of some of the materials you know entering into that that watershed area um now looking at the conditions that were set for um this project um there's no specific condition that we could reference um that you know there was you know, nothing that said that there's X amount of foliage to be placed here or that it would have to be a certain amount of growth or anything of that nature. Um, but I would like to uh, maybe make a request and I can make a request within the um, signing off on the um, certificate here that um, the applicant would look at providing additional vegetation veg, vegetative cover on this side hill and or um, some type of engineering on the top to minimize the amount of water flow that would come down through the side hill and that may cross the street and into the watershed so that would be more of a quest and i would i would ask um, chuck and um, andrew to see if that was something that you feel would be I can't go back to a special condition and say you didn't meet it or not meet it, but this would be more of a request that say, this is what the conservation commission would like to see if you guys are willing to do it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we, um, you know, we spoke with Deerfield Academy um, about the observations that were made during the field walk and um, they came up with the idea, as you suggested to add, you know, eight to 12 ornamental, additional ornamental grasses on the slope we're thinking more toward the top of the slope where it's steeper yeah. to stabilize that area and then also to perform some grading um, okay. just be just behind the top of slope to divert water um, away toward existing catch basins instead of down the slope so that it gets less water. Okay. And um, the the goal would be to install that within within a month time frame. So that's great. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, and I think that would help. Uh, Kate, what do you think you're out there? I think that's good. Okay. I, I, that makes sense. And it, that's sort of what we were talking about when we were there too. Yeah. Uh, with Brett. So. So. I might need your help now everybody because on the form i have to either uh show that it's a complete certification that all the work we're regulated uh has been satisfactorily completed which per our conditions we can talk about that but i think it was so and the next one is a partial certification and the partial certification it's uh, only certain portions of done um you know, there's not an invalid order of conditions or ongoing conditions uh, because the ongoing conditions state that the there is a condition that would be ongoing. So I'm thinking that we would 
name it with a complete certification with a note um, that there's agreement uh, between the um, applicant and the commission um, to do eight to 12 warm of grasses on that slope and grading on the top of the slope as an agreement only, but it would be a, um, a complete certificate that we do now because we don't, we didn't have the, the conditions in place to start with. Any thoughts? And I, I can start with the applicant and thoughts on that work for you or? Yeah, that, <clears throat> that works for, for us. And any other discussion from the commissioners? Um, I would only say that if they meet the conditions for uh, a, a complete certif certificate, and we've already discussed uh, additional erosion control and sediment control with grasses at almost I hate to use the term a gentleman's agreement, but does it do we want that in the motion? Um, or can it just be understood? Or my suggestion prior to that was uh, we can just approve this next month if they're going to do it in 30 days um, and approve the other two as a bundle. Um, but I think that I from the picture here, a little ad additional, it seems just that they would be doing that anyway um so yeah so a question really is to you pete if you want it in the motion and if you do so I then i would suggest we uh, approve them separately yeah so i think it's um you know we have the agreement um from chuck and and from da it's so i'm solid there but you know it's a not a bad idea of maybe putting Pushing that off um, for 30 days, whatever you think, Chuck. I mean, it's been since 2017. Um, to close this out, or I'm just mulling it through and want to give every the applicant and everybody a, a chance to really think about this one. And nobody would need to come in the next meeting if they sent notice that, yep, the plantings were done and we drove by and approved, then we could just approve it as part of like old business and wouldn't require anybody's time. Yeah, okay. uh, you could send us some photos. We, I can do a, yeah. I, I okay. ride my bicycle up there three or four times a week so I could just take that corner and go down there and take a look. Yeah, that, that would be acceptable as well. Um, okay. Sure. Uh, how does this work with our we had a previous application where we had to close out these order of conditions within 90 days. Is it, this is this, I don't know if this, um, this is up against that deadline, but if it does, I would assume that this would kind of extend that. Um, yeah. You know, a certain amount of time just, just to um, implement these additional measures. Yeah. If you're saying it's within 30 days, we'll just, um, um, Since we won't do the certificate right now, but we'll send you a note from the town, Chuck, that the four um one four two oh two one two that we've extended the time period to resolve um the um open conditions um until you know thirty days hence from the previous day. Amy okay. and I can write something up for that date so you have it in your file, but okay. yeah. We'll be we'll, we won't be uh we won't be too harsh on that one. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then the third one is one four two zero one seven seven, the athletic uh, project, and um, as Chuck talked about, this was for the academy athletic building. Um, it was for uh, an anrad. There was no rad. Um, the work was never completed. Um, there's nothing there. And so I would say we can, um, complete the certificate of compliance with, um, the invalid order of conditions. Um, it just said the uh, order conditions were never commenced. Um, so it's lapsed and it's no longer valid. And, um, those are the, that's the guidance I've got from DEP in the past for some of our old ones that just never happened. So, um, that would be what I would think there. 
Any other discussion from the applicant? No, I think we're all set. Okay. Anything else from the commissioners? So try to keep it simple. Um, then we will take maybe two motions. Take a motion to um, take care of 1420209 with complete and 142017 with um, invalid order conditions. We can vote on those, those will be closed out. And then a second motion to um, keep discussion um, on 142.0212 open until our uh, next regularly scheduled meeting in September. Um, I think that's all we need to do with with the motions is to keep it simple. And Chuck, I promise we'll um, I'll work with Amy over the next couple of days and get you a letter um, so that it's documented that uh, what we agreed to and there's an extension of 30 day period. Okay. Okay. So with that, unless there's other discussion, I'd take a motion to do the first two. Okay. Uh, Sean, let me make a motion to accept uh, certificate of compliance as complete for file number 1420209 and uh, a certificate of invalid order of conditions for file number 1420177 um, regarding Deerfield Academy. Okay, motion on the table. Do I have a second? Kate Devon, I'll second. Ben Barron, I'll second. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we got a second second. Um, so I guess we're doubly second. Um, you good. First, you last. Uh, yeah. Motion on the table. Any other discussions from the commissioners? Otherwise, we'll take a quick roll call vote to accept that. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So that motion passes, and then uh, Sean will take a, another motion to continue discussion on the 01420212 until our next scheduled September meeting. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to continue the discussion on 1420212 Certificate of Compliance to the next regularly scheduled meeting in September 24th at 6 okay. p.m. Motion on the table. Do I have a second? Kate Devlin, second. Okay. Motion on the table. Any other discussion from the commissioners? Can I amend that to September 28th? Yeah. <laughs> I had the sure. calendar on August. My, my apologies. Oh, no, no, yeah. You got it. Um, anything else for discussion from the commissioners? No. Other, otherwise, we'll do a quick roll call on the... Uh, motion on the table uh, amended to reflect September 28th meeting. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Uh, ben Byrne. I think I got it through. Uh, yeah. Pete Law, aye. So good. So we got two out of three done, guys. Thank you so much. And we'll get the yeah. next one done next month. And like I said, uh, send me some photos. I'll drive by. Uh, you probably don't have to take your time next month on, in joining us unless you like wish to. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Take Thank care. you. Take care now. Thanks. Take care. Yeah. All right. Well, that helps take care of some of our Older business, good. Um, last thing we have uh, to discuss on old business is the ratification of the WPA emergency certification forms. Um, these are relative to um, 22 Keats Road, uh, Wapping, or 53, uh, Steam Mill Road, 321 Conway Road, Lower Road, Wapping Road, Pine Nook Road, and what's not on the agenda tonight, but will 
is in part of our package is uh, the DA self division culvert. Um, so has everybody had a chance to look at these in the package? I, I have, um, let me, um, this is uh, some photos of, uh, let's see, 22 Keats Road. What happened there? Um, so you can see what kind of little brook came through there. <laughs> Um, so that was for the, to, um, washed out treatment work before rebuilding, restructuring the embankment, et cetera. Um, second one is at 138, 139 lower road. That was where the entire road washed away, uh, in the midst there, um, the next one here is 321 Conway Road, 116, right at the base of the mountain. Um, there's just a um, undersized culvert led, leading to multiple flood events in the past three years over 116. Um, next one was at um, Deerfield Academy South Division Field Culvert. Um, this is a culvert on the west side of... Um, Bill Village Road um, that connects to coming across. Um, actually, starts over at Wapping Road and cuts cuts under um, by the Candy um, area and, and down through um, Pine Nick Road. Uh, just, just I don't think we have the pictures of this, but you know Pine Nick Road. This is just all the locations that occurred up there and, and what we're doing and what needs to be done as well as um, Wapping Road and the addition, adjacent areas. And again, just a whole list of what's occurred in that area. So these have all been um, submitted and they have due dates that are coming up pretty soon. Um, I'm able to do, do an emergency certification for um, a 30 day period and, um, some of the 30 day periods are coming up. I have a request into, um, DEP for an additional 30 day period for Wapping Road, Pine Nook Road, and the DA South Division culvert. And, uh, I hope to, it may be on the computer now, but I hope to, if not, um, tomorrow morning, you know, try to get another 30 day extension to get some of this emergency work done uh, in those areas. So that's the update. I do expect at least one more um, cert certificate to be submitted next week. I forget the location. Amy, do you recall? Um, um, not sure. No. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I don't um, John sent it the other day, but I can't remember. <clears throat> so we maybe get another one in. But right now we need to take a motion to ratify uh, the emergency certifications as I uh, signed off and as you've been able to see in your uh, meeting packets and as we just reviewed. So I would take a, um, and that's the updates. And if anybody has any questions on the work that's being done or if you any input or how's the work on Pine Nook Road? I haven't walked up there to see anything. I haven't been up there for a couple of weeks now. Um, Cause you so will be open today, right? Just yeah. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I'm getting the kids in there. So they definitely had to do some of the road crossings that weren't there yeah. to get to Eagle Brook. So those have to be done. Um, the biggest problem up there on Pine Brook was, um, or Pine Nook, um, was the, the, the little brook that comes down, yeah. um, turned into a raging river and right. it moved its stream bed from here over to here, channeled out. Um, so that was above the first entrance into the school, um, actually between the two entrances, um, uh, 
so I that would I I would have to check to see where they're at with that. You know, kind of putting the brook back to where it started from. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I was just curious, you know, how, yeah. how it's going because that's major, major work. <laughs> yeah, and th this is just the the emergency part of it to get right. things back and pavement in place and um, somewhere down the road. Um, I think we'll see um, a request from the town for, you know, some major, major work um, that crosses the whole area. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Wapping Road, I went across two or three days ago. Um, There's somebody working in there, like, you know, dredging out the, the swales on both sides of the road. Um, but there'd be, oh, I think there's at least a half a dozen or six or eight culverts to replace up, up in that area as well um i think lower road should have been done uh, but i haven't heard back from john on that um and i need to actually i'd ask john what the status was on 22 keats road uh 52 steam mill road 321 conway road and lower road um because they're period of performance they're running out i think next week uh, yeah um and then you know whopping and pine nook and um uh, the d area is going to have to take at least another month so yeah okay i, I was just curious yeah that's kind of the update so um any other questions comments You'll notice, uh, I think the town has bought a lot of riprap. And there's a lot of riprap in different spots of the town right now. And we'll see how that goes. Um, okay. Do you want a motion? Yeah, for I think for a ratification, if you would, for the uh, the entire group. And yep. Just as discussed. Um, I, would, I would make a motion to ratify the emergency certification forms for the work reviewed uh, during tonight's um meeting all right sounds good do we have a second eight devil and second okay motion on the table any other comments from the commissioners seeing none we'll take a quick roll call kate devlin kate devlin aye sean libby sean libby aye ben burn ben burn aye uh pete law aye so Thank you much. And we, uh, those are in place. And like I said, the work continues uh, back and forth with DEP just today and tomorrow. And I'm trying to get a few more things done on that. Um, okay. Any general discussion? That's the next thing or any new business brought up. I haven't. Don't know of any. Any general discussion for items on the table? The only one that I would then ask for a little bit of general discussion on is from Sean and Kate on the. I was um, just going to say. <laughs> on update at Treehouse on the signage. I know you've had some yeah. meetings and such. Um. So we had a we had a Zoom meeting and then we also had a in person walkthrough at Treehouse to talk about um, the creation of signs and we were meeting with their um, I guess it's their marketing team who puts together all their brochures and stuff and signs design team design team that's the term <laughs> right <laughs> um, <laughs> and. Um, I thought it was it was great. They had they had they they've started to put together a mood board. A mood board. You've got all the terms <laughs> right. I'm like I don't know. It's like a whiteboard with stuff on it, pictures. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, you go ahead and talk. I'll just type. <laughs> no, I just I liked the word choices that that we yeah. had at the meeting. Yeah, it, it's definitely upping the. <laughs> the language <laughs> formalizing it yeah Very contemporary oh. yeah 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 well that's good Kate, so we're, Kate we're congratulating both of 
added to a Google Doc that I don't know if it's not available to everybody who has Google Drive through the town. Is that where it lives, or did you just? No, share I don't think it? so. It's just a Google Doc I created okay. for yeah. us. Anyway, I've been behind. I have some stuff to add to it. Uh, I think we will be trying to set up another meeting, just the three of us, um, in the next couple of weeks, and then. Um, We'll be moving forward. They had said that they thought a uh, spring uh, for a rollout, yeah. so that gives us time on our end to work up material and and uh, and to look at their mood board. I haven't actually checked checked that out yet, so um, I don't know what I'm going to find. Well, some of it were were actually pictures that Gretchen had pulled and that are part of the the Google Doc too. Yeah. So, okay. So Pete, maybe you were involved with some of that too. Um, so. They like they like stuff, so it's good. They're very good. keen. That you know, they they even said you know, give us some rough wording and we can smooth it out, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and good. Uh, you know, they're yeah, they it was great for them to actually see the trails and realizing that they need a trail map <laughs> to have for yeah. people with distances yeah. so that people know, you know, this is not a, a 10 mile trek. It's a nice little loop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, we talked about yeah. invitational type signs at the beginning of the walk and then maybe focusing some of the signage along their nice bridges, both the one that was authorized and the one that wasn't. And, uh, um, yeah, I think it'll work out really well. I think we're looking at maybe six signs um, yeah. covering a wide breadth of, of things. And I think a few of them will be crossover that the town can use, like the wetland reclamation project. Uh, maybe uh, I think uh, I, I cast to like with uh, the pollinator habitat, I guess I know that's her thing. So, uh, and she had done some work that I haven't reviewed yet on the Google Doc. Um, so, I think that we will uh, have some real meaty stuff to look at maybe in the next six weeks to uh, two months. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, yeah, when we get some of the, the proofs from them, if you will, then you know, I'll just notify this like board of what we're working on and see if we can kind of, um, you know, not utilize this one per se, but the concept with some of the... Uh, discussions with the open something committee um, here in town and so forth. They're working on signs as well. So that's great. You know Thank you so much. Do you know what material they're looking at for using for their signs? I mean, I think that's sort of key. If we're going to try and be consistent throughout the town yeah. um, to sort of match up along. Yeah. I don't know. And I, I don't know exactly. That's why I was trying to get some sense of what their, you know, once we hear from Treehouse, so what their design is going to be, what their proofs of design is going to be, and and then see if we could either mimic or whatever, but mostly the uh, open spaces committee, I guess it is. I mean, a lot of it is just um, trail signs. Yeah. You know, trail starts here, one mile, two miles, you know, not yeah. too much educational kind of thing um, that we're putting together. So, all right. That sounds great. All yeah. right. Well, maybe some of the educational stuff can come later if we like some of the stuff we'll be we'll be able to reuse maybe the the wording and stuff like that and that you mm. know could be always added to a trail yeah 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 i think the wetland project signage could be added to any wetland yeah project yeah and even like you know, the stream too. pollinator habitat and stuff like that yeah, would be done absolutely. through other places yeah. throughout town so i think those signs say minus the treehouse logo or yeah. if the town is cool with keeping the treehouse logo and they do the work you know as a in kind you know matching like if they helped do some design i don't care to give you know if we give them credit too mm -hmm. um, but i don't that probably has to be discussed at higher levels yeah no oh, it's really great though glad we're getting this one kicked off do we need approval to use the town like how amy has the town administrator symbol like i think we'll have something like the town symbol you know and maybe something for the concom you know or put together by yeah. the concom or yeah once we get to that point where i can kind of share some maybe. of the design um things and then i can you know make that request to either casey or the select boards that you know we want to 
what's the wording that you would like us to use for to represent the conservation commission or do we use the you know the the logo for the town et cetera so once we get a little bit further down um with some of their designs we can pick up some of the details great um let me just share the screen again um so that we're on to the mail this is the national grid notification of utility maintenance um and just just letting us know that they're uh, exempt utility maintenance and they're going to be doing this stuff <laughs> any questions on this one Nope. Um, There's not much we can say. We just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for letting us know. That they're doing it. <laughs> That's yeah. all. Um, this was from Rich Earth. Um, they're up in Brattleboro. And this was a notice of some of their Zoom meetings. And was anyone able to go to that? I was not. And I was just looking for it. I think it just occurred a few weeks ago right yeah i i found out about it too late it was yeah. Third. yeah or 10th third yeah. 10th yeah did anybody attend otherwise no if anybody wants to reach out to them follow up with them you know that's fine just let me know but um you know it's their uh i know if somebody's working there it's uh it's funny they call it pea cycling it's urine recycling and, uh, funny um so that's just a notice and then the macc sent a notice of uh their wetlands bylaws ordinance table updates request for information they have somebody working in the summer and see if we have any information i neglected to reach out to them but i need to do that because i have isn't, some questions for them isn't this the perfect timing you know, yes, they're is, literally yes. putting together a list of every other town's ordinances. Yeah. They'll say, so, hey, Deerfield has none. Can we get that? <laughs> I think, I think, um, I think, I think I, I might have already answered, answered that, that um, we, we don't, don't have any. I'd have, have to check, check my email. email. Um, but, but I, I did, did I, I looked at the table. table. It's, it's a little funky to use, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a, a good, good resource. You know, know we're considering um, doing that. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, something on me because I got to follow up with that. So I will. Uh, I have it on my to-do list here. All right. I think that's it for the meeting packet. Um, items unanticipated 48 hours prior. Uh, one came up, I guess, yesterday. Um, and I know Amy sent you out the notice here on that, um, for, oh, Amy, who was it? Berkshire Design. Uh, Berkshire yeah, Design. Berkshire group. Design, um, yeah, on behalf of the Senior Housing Committee, so it's a town thing. And so they wanted a, um. A meeting because they're under, I'm not sure if they're under the, some schedule constraints or the way they submitted it. We have 21 days to respond, et cetera. So we're looking for a special meeting for that on September 14th, I believe. Yep. Yep. Um, and I think uh, Amy said that most of us can make it that night, so we can uh, just go ahead and Post that, and we'll um, share the um, information that we, we receive. So, I believe this is for an ANRAD. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's an, an ANRAD. Um, I, I think, think the, the, the town is thinking about purchasing a property, and they, they, they want to check, check it out. Okay, so the ANRAD. I mean, it's mostly for us as uh, as we went through with um, sunny days. The um, you know, see if it's applicable or not and see if they, if we need to move forward with it. So I um, appreciate that. If we could knock that one off in a couple of weeks and then we'll have our next uh, meeting on September 28th. Um, 
anything else from the commissioners tonight? Otherwise, we get a lot done. No, don't see anything, don't hear anything. So, um, unless there's anything else, I'll take a motion John to Libby wrap it up. Moves to adjourn at 7.08 p.m. Good meeting. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Kate Devlin, second. <laughs> All right. Motion on the table to adjourn at this meeting. Uh, take a quick roll call. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. John Levy. Don't be I. Pete Law, I. Oh, Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, forgotten on I. Yeah. <laughs> Safe driving, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Stuck in the back. Uh, it's okay. All right. So, Amy, I think we can shut down the recording. And... Okay. I'll do that right now.